So if I'm hearing you correctly, it may actually, in fact, be easier to get a license to manufacture, research, or distribute psychedelics than cannabis. Exactly. The cannabis heyday, the license applications that you use that not have to, similar to psychedelics now, build out your facility. You could just build and submit an application. How many applications before that that change to pre-built facilities do you think there was in total? And do you think we're going to see a similar amount of psychedelic license facilities applications? Less, more? What are, you, what are your you know, napkin math projections on that? Yeah, let me grab a back of a napkin here. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to project, but you know, I can certainly shed some light on why this was happening. When cannabis began booming, stocks were exploding. We, we saw a pathway. We had an election and Trudeau came into power and he was very vocal about his stance on legalization. Health Canada became flooded with, with cannabis applications. It was, it was a certainty that this was coming and this was happening and this was going to blow up. And, you know, we certainly saw that develop and mature uh, to from, you know, from a medical framework to an adult use framework. This tied up an immense amount of resources at our, our federal regulator at Health Canada, which meant that they were evaluating these applications that were being submitted on spec because people were going to take that letter of, you know, that confirmation letter and go up and down Bay Street or Wall Street and try and make as big of a raise as they could as possible. And a lot of these folks failed. They burnt out. They uh, they went bankrupt. They couldn't get their their stuff together. And these applications were, which were very thoroughly reviewed. They wanted a ton more information back then. They wanted to see all these SOPs. So binders this thick of of uh, application documents were being reviewed. So they said, you know what, f this, build it. Then we'll look at it, and then we'll know that you're 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 for real and you're serious. So the medical cannabis framework and the cannabis part is different than the part that's going to be reviewing the CDSA that's going to be reviewing those dealers license applications. They're actually super friendly. The process is very straightforward. Uh, and if anything, the uh, the physical security directives that they're looking for for controlled substances is actually less in many cases than cannabis. It's almost as though Health Canada hates cannabis, doesn't want it to be legal, is reluctantly doing this. And uh, when you're applying under the CDSA, you're treated like a, a very renowned and revered pharmaceutical manufacturing company they're very responsive and the timelines are very reasonable so if i'm hearing you correctly it may actually in fact be easier to get a license to manufacture research or distribute psychedelics than cannabis exactly exactly that very and that's that's interesting. So we worked with a ton of pharma companies. Uh, we've worked with uh, pharma companies that have wanted to do cannabis and these were 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 manufacturing plants that would have fentanyl and uh, all these opiates and opioids uh, in, in their level 10 vault. And a level 10 vault is basically one level below needing a moat with, you know, a, an archer tower around it. It's It's got a huge swinging door that's several tons made of, you know, one foot of steel, poured concrete. Um, and inside that vault where they had their fentanyl, they'd have to build a cage for the cannabis. Right. So if I ever want to uh, apply for a licensed facility myself, do you have a guy for moats and archers? That sounds pretty cool. 